Hello YouTube, it's me John Avenger once again and welcome back to my YouTube channel. We're back in my room because uh, my family just came back from vacation so I want to go back to my room, my roots. And uh, welcome back to PG-13 Movie Month. Now tonight I'm going to go to a franchise that I just finished seeing last year. Uh, it's a mixed quality, it's definitely not as good as The Hunger Games, but it's one of the young adult movies that I didn't mind, I thought was decent at best. It's not horrible. Two of them are decent. The third one I just absolutely despised. And that is Divergent. This is the first movie based on a worldwide bestseller that I never wrote. I never read. Sorry. But as a film, I'm going to judge it as a film. Exciting Spectacular. It's decent. I like the film. I know my friend Sean's not a fan. That's fine. It's not meant for you. I... Didn't see this in the theater when it came out. I was like, oh, that looks just like The Hunger Games. And it is, but it's a, it's got its own things, too. First of all, it's got a different lead, like uh, this girl, Shaney Woodley, who I absolutely love in the movie. I think she's great in all three films, even the third one, the weakest. Uh, you know, she's a, a female character that's a teenager in a, in, a world, in a dystopian world, just like in The Hunger Games. And she kicks ass, and she's strong-willed. And she doesn't die at the end, so there's that. And, of course, she has a romance with the lead guy, which, you know, was coming. Uh, this is directed by Neil Berger. He he did uh, Limitless, which I think is a very good movie with uh, uh, Bradley Cooper. He also did a lot of other stuff. The Illusionist I haven't seen and a bunch of other stuff. But, yeah, he's a good director. I like the way he sh shoots this movie. It's a good-looking film. It has a budget. It's a big budget, but he ha it has a budget. The premise is interesting where these... People are put into these factions uh, based on their mental training. And, uh, you know, there is five different factions. And, uh, yeah, basically this is the plot. Divergent is a thrilling action adventure set in a future where society has been divided into five distinct factions. Patrice, Beatrice, that's her real name, will never fit into any one group. She is a divergent, what makes her different from what makes her dangerous. Targeted by a faction leader determined to eliminate all divergence, Tris turns to the one person she believes she can trust for, played by Theo James, and uh, an instructor for the militant uh, Dauntless faction, and a man full of dark secrets. Together, Tris and Four cover a mind-bending conspiracy that will put their courage to the ultimate test and forever link their destinies. Yeah, basically like PETA and Katniss in, in the Hunger Games. And I can understand why this got a mixed reaction from critics. They thought that the premise and the action was well done. The action is well done. It's not shaky cam. I can see what's going on. They actually, hey, look, Last Jedi, this is how you show, how you develop a female character. She actually trains. Yeah, not with an old master. She trains physically and mentally. She actually does, we see the process. In the first hour of the movie, it's basically her training, and then she becomes a badass in the second half. That's how you develop a character. Not just, oh, she's a divergent, so she's a Mary Sue character that can do everything. No. She's vulnerable. She actually loses. Her family dies. Spoiler alert. Her mother, played by Ashley Judd, an actress I'm not a fan of, dies in like halfway through the movie. And then in the second movie, she has hallucinations of seeing her. So, yeah. Vulnerability. That's a good sign. Now, I had to have some issues with the movie, too. Not as much as The Mummy, because that, you know, the lead girl is just horrendous. Here, I like Sheeny Woolley, an all-American actress, beautiful, close to my age. And she has one thing that Sophie Turner doesn't have. Screen presence. Sorry, Dark Phoenix, you're going to suffer for that next year. But anyway, yeah, look at that face. That's a cute-looking face. I haven't seen Fault in Our Stars, but I do like this actress. Uh, you know, she's very appealing here. She has the best haircut because she has long flowing hair and, you know, she's beautiful and she actually is, is very visual. She like jumps around. She's not just a superpower being uh, and she's likable. You know, she carries the film on her shoulders. I also like Ansel Elgort. He's um, he plays her brother. He's a really good actor. If you've seen Baby Driver, he's a freaking awesome actor in that. He, he carries that movie because Lily James can't do it in that movie. And he's also very likable. He's very quiet, but he's a really good actor in the film. Uh, Miles Teller, he he's mixed. I'm mixed on him because in these movies, he's like he's a good guy, then he's a bad guy. This is a good guy. He 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 switches back and forth so much. He's kind of inconsistent. I don't know if that that's how it was in the books, but here it wasn't. Now uh, I do have my issues with the movie. 
some of the supporting cast kind of sucks. Kate Winslet, Britt, doesn't bother me in the movie only because she was pregnant during the filming, so she doesn't have much to do. So she is passable. Um, Theo James is not a good lead. Like a, a leading man, I'm sorry, he's British James Franco. He's very flat. If you saw Underworld Blood Wars, you'll see what I, what I mean. He's just really flat. He has that same serious face for the whole movie. As for, he's just, she could have done a lot better, Shane Woodley, and she could have. Uh, second, uh, Maggie Q, I love Maggie Q as an actress. I think she's one of the best things in, in you know, best Asian American actresses in the last 15 years. She's badass in movies, you know, she, in television shows like Nikita, she proved that she could lead a TV show. She's a gorgeous woman. Here, she doesn't have much to do. I wish she had more to do, and I hated what they did to her in the, in one of the sequels. It just pissed me off. Uh, Tony Goldwyn, he's there. He's in the film. Uh, Ray Stevenson, he's barely in the movie. Jai Courtney, he looks horrible. He has, like, these freaking, you know, like, dots on his face, and he's very pale, and he's like, I'm gonna, gonna get to Divergent. He's very, very boring in the movie. Uh, Zoe Kravitz, cutie pie. Beautiful black girl. I always liked her. Also, the soundtrack is horrible in this movie. The soundtrack is absolute ass. Every time they do something in the movie, they throw a song that doesn't fit the movie. There's a scene where, uh, basically, uh, Tris, you know, uh, Shailene Woodley is, is like, ziplining, and they put this freaking pop song that doesn't fit at all. I'm like, oh, my God, you're ruining this freaking atmosphere. I'm sucked into this world of the divergence. Why did you put a freaking soundtrack that sounds like it belongs in a freaking Twilight movie? I know it's a young adult novel, written by a woman, Veronica Roth. I get it, okay? But The Hunger Games, that would have been like if Katniss was running in the first Hunger Games and they play an Ariana Grande song. Would it fit? No, it would feel out of place. Don't do that. Please, Hollywood, stop hiring people that can't do the soundtrack right. Just stop it. The music department, you got to fire these idiots that have done the, the, the CW shows like The Flash and Legends of Tomorrow and freaking... Uh, you know, Supergirl, you know, when they first, it was on CBS and then on, on, and then it came to CW. Stop putting these stupid songs. It doesn't add atmosphere. Just, it just makes it laughable. And it just took me out of it. I hate the soundtrack in this movie. I like the score. Score is good. The score is done by, um, whatchamacallit. Let's see. EDB. Production, code, music. A uh, Randall poster and music by Junk, Junk, Junkie XL. And also, an executive score producer, Hans Zimmer. So the score is in good hands. It's really well done. It's atmospheric. It's very well sound. And, uh, you know, it's 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 good. You, the, the freaking soundtrack is just terrible. Um, but Junkies XL, yeah, fuck that guy that, got, that did the music for this, the soundtrack. It just He doesn't know what he's doing. He or she just ruined it. The writing is pretty is pretty decent. I mean, it's not like like Shane Woolley's character is a complete idiot. Like, like a freaking, uh, not Katniss. I love Katniss. Uh. She's not freaking Mary Sue, uh, you know, Bella, Bella Swan and freaking Twilight. She actually can make good decisions. She makes mistakes, but then she lives with it. And she's likable. And she doesn't dress like a guy. Yeah. Look at that. That pose right there. That That's sexy. Super sexy ass right there. And I like her. She's a white girl that actually is not a zombie. And is not pale as a ghost like Bella in the first Twilight. And, uh, yeah, my other issues, like I said, I said some of the supporting cast, the, sco the, the the freaking music soundtrack is god-awful, and the film is a little bit too long. Yeah. I said it before, i say it again. A movie doesn't need to be over two hours to be epic. I, I hate to say this, but this movie is longer than The Force Awakens and Rogue One. Why? You could have cut a lot of characters out of this movie. I know the book had a lot of characters. I haven't read the book, but in this first movie, you don't need to be almost two hours and 20 minutes. There's a lot of shit in the middle of the movie you can cut out. I saw this on TV first, and I still felt a little bit too long. I'm like, yeah, the training stuff is fine. That's to develop your lead character. But the stuff with freaking, like, Naomi Watts, I think she's in the sequel. Yeah. She, she's Theo's mother in the sequel in The Insurgent. You didn't need that in the sequel. But in the first movie, you're like, there's a lot of characters you could cut out. If you're not going to do anything with them, like Ray Stevenson, he's barely in it. Uh, Ashley Judd, she's barely in it. Freaking, uh, you know, uh, whatchamacallit, Jai Courtney is barely in it. I know, I, you know, he, and he wasn't needed in this movie. Easily he could have been cut out. And, uh, yeah, that's about it. That's all, those are all my complaints about the movie. Everything else, solid. Like, I, I love the look of the movie. 
I like the premise. It's a sci-fi premise, not some freaking fantasy YA bullshit novel like Twilight or The Host. Um, you know, the action sequences, I think, are very well done. When they're running and, and they're jumping through the buildings and everything, it reminded me of Doctor Strange a little bit, especially in the sequel. Uh, you know, the, the, your lead girl is kick-ass. I think she her performance is really good. It's not perfect writing, but I'll take it. I'll take a decent script over a shitty script any day. And uh, like I said, it's a, it's a fun movie. Like if you shut your brain off and you don't want, you're thinking that oh, this is going to be Twilight with a sci-fi twist. It's not Twilight. Yeah, this, also the romance I think is I don't buy because like I said, Theo James is kind of flat for me, and him and Shailene Woodley don't have the fire chemistry that Jennifer uh, Lawrence had with uh, Josh Hutcherson or you know Ross Lynch with freaking uh, Laura Morano. You can't duplicate that. It has to be natural because if it's not then it's going to be a failure but with the romance part of the film. But other than that, I like Divergent. It's not perfect. I know it's not for everybody. I gave it a chance. And the first movie is probably, you know, it's it's more like, it's more, it's less, it's not a great young adult novel adaptation, but it's a fun, decent action, sci-fi, dramatic, psychological thriller. That's the, how That's how I can put it. And like I said, Neil Berger's a good, really good director. I don't know if he directed the sequel. Let me see. I don't think he did. But I do like this film too. I'm probably going to review it. I got to see these two films again. This one's a lot shorter, which is really good. Because, you know, uh, they knew with the first one it was just too long. Yeah, the, the Kate, uh, Naomi Watts is in the sequel. So, uh, yeah, Bob Robert Schwenke did the sequel. He did Red, which I really like. With Bruce Willis. I think that's a good movie. But Neil Berger, you did a good job with this. It reminded me a little bit of Limitless, you're, you know, the way you shoot the movie. And you made Shane and Woodley look like a million bucks. And she she should be in more movies. The fact that you took her away from us in freaking Amazing Spider-Man 2, fuck you, Sony. And what's his name? Uh, freaking uh, this guy, uh, Mark Webb. How dare you take what could have been an awesome Mary Jane... In the Amazing Spider-Man two or three, or even in the freaking Homecoming, you took her away from us. You cut the one thing that could have made that ending of, of that movie work after Gwen dies. Dumb. You took out this beautiful lady right there, and she's beautiful. I really love Shane Willie. I think she's going places. I know Adrift wasn't a good movie. I heard that it was just weak, but I want to see more of her stuff because she can really she can act. Unlike your precious hobo. Nerd pack. I buy this girl a lot more, and she's older. Yeah, that always gonna help. She's American. She's got long flowing hair. She's very likable. She's skinny, but again, I could. I'll take what I can get. If it's American and it appeals to me, I'll I'll, I'll take only anything over a freaking Brit any day. Sorry, but that's that's just how I feel. And uh, you know, even if it wasn't based on a book, I did like the premise. I liked the trailer when it came out. I'm like, oh, that kind of looks like the Hunger Games. It it looks interesting, and uh, yeah, it's similar, but I don't hate it. It's not a copy like other freaking movies are nowadays, but so I like Divergent. I think it's underrated. Um, it doesn't deserve like a 40-some percent on Rotten Tomatoes. I get why people didn't, uh, critics didn't like it. They, they thought it was wasted. It was just running the, you know, the bandwagon of Hunger Games because it was still around at that time, but it's not as terrible as The Host. It's not as bad as Vampire Academy. Or any of the Twilight movies, or freaking, uh, I don't know, Beautiful Creatures, or Warm Bodies. No, those, I'm just, I'm tired of those. Here, if you took the romance out and it was just her, I would be like, that's fine, that's good enough for me. Not every female-driven movie has to have a romance. Sometimes, she's fine on her own. When they develop her right. Case in point. But anyway, Divergence is a, good, a decent film. So, if you, it, it's watchable. If you watch it... You won't feel like you're, oh my god, this is going to be the most painful thing. I was surprised, considering that, you know, I've seen so many of these kinds of films. But I like the film. It's not for everyone, but it's kind of for me. So take that for what you will. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Take care, and maybe next time I'll review the sequel. If I don't, I'll review it in, in September, because I got things lined up for that. So thanks for watching. Take care, guys, and see you in the next one.